Well, my next guest, when, 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 you know, sometimes in Ghana they say, oh, the next person needs no introduction. Then they spend the next 10 minutes introducing the person. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> this man, when I say he needs no introduction, I really do mean that he needs no introduction because what I like about this man, my next guest, is that he brought a sense of, how do I call it? You know, he reduced the tension during the election, you know? He, he was not the kind of candidate that was taking himself so seriously that he couldn't relax. And I like it. Because of him, the elections were much, much, much more uh, pleasant. You know who I'm talking about. They even named the cough mister after him calling the Yara cough and things. But <laughs> that was not true. But anyway, show some love. Put your hands together for the great man. His Excellency, Mr. Hassan Ayarega. <laughs> yes, sir. 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 How you doing? Oh, we did you oh, like to? Yeah, yeah, what one, one, two, three. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. <laughs> Now, anybody comes here, you have to do the leg, hands and the legs. And the legs, that's it. How are you doing, boss? My brother, thank you. Jerry, you're looking good, though. Thanks to the Almighty and thanks to my wife. And your wife? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why, she, she checks every morning? Yes, she checks everything and give a mark. <laughs> what, what is her checklist? What, what does she go through? She checks everything. Everything? From the beginning to the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's lovely. You're looking good, man. But um, life after your presidential candidacy, how... You brought a certain, how do I call it? I don't want to say you brought humor to the thing because it would be like, you know, but you, you relaxed the whole thing. Your attitude and demeanor made, made things, made politics enjoyable. Was it deliberate or that's just you by nature? Anyway, that's me by nature. And um, believe me, even at home, that's how I behave. I always make my wife and my kids laugh and smile. <laughs> but uh, one thing I realized was that after the whole politics, it seems to me people or Ghanaians didn't take me serious because I was because much you had the light. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, you don't need to be every time so uh, hard for people to know that you can perform. We we actually can perform even when we laugh and smile and crack and create jokes. I want Ghanaians to understand that the presidency is not heaven. So we should be able to as a president or somebody uh, uh, seeking for the man mandate of Ghanaians to rule should be able to be relaxed relax himself and, and make some kind of jokes. After all, uh, I'm just coming to serve. Yeah, yeah. Your father, your father was a member of parliament? Yes, my father was a member uh, of parliament in um, Dr. Hilary Mams regime. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of MP was he? Was he also jovial like you? Was he relaxed or he was more of the old schools, stern? I don't know what politicians tend to, but he was uh, much, much jovial like myself. But uh, Africans believe in politics one has to be very serious. But seriousness does not win uh, elections in any way. <laughs> one needs to be uh, a bit more calm, jokeful a bit, and let the people understand that, look, you can unite them. And when you unite them, then you can rule. But when you show some kind of aggressiveness or being so serious, thinking that, no, we are in the heaven gate and about to enter heaven, so everybody must be serious, that is not politics for me. Yeah. yeah. But so how do you do with the situation? You're going to run again, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. You are? Yeah. How are you dealing with, with, with Ghanaians who have that psyche that if you want to be president, you must be serious? I, I think uh, I am not dealing with them. They are dealing with themselves. <laughs> but what I, what I suggest is that um, you, 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 need, you need to, first of all, study the people who want to rule you. You see, some people are not accommodating. Others want to be or feel like everybody is a family. Uh, when you study the people very well, you get to know who is going to serve us well and who is going to consider our problems more than sometimes you find a boss who is so serious at work and i can tell you productivity does not even increase when you are too serious but sometimes when you are so relaxed with your workers and everybody comes into the working place and have fun whilst working the productivity level go higher than mm -hmm. what's what's your view on that that doesn't work in ghana in ghana there you must be hard you must you, you must you must you must show them where the power lies. Uh, that's what I hear the Ghanaian psyche re responds to. Do you believe in that? I think it will change. It will change when people will begin to uh, change their attitude toward work and attitude towards their workers. Slowly, you are a very nice person. I believe your workers are happy with you, right? Yeah. It's not because you joke, but it's because of your nature. In principles, if you were not a nice person, you cannot be acting something like this. If you put a serious mind here, it'd be very serious anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what, what I do is entertainment. 
Yeah. And that's how Ghanaians think, you know. Yeah. If if I was supposed to go and run for office right now, they would say, do you lay me? You are no, no, no. They would, they would just throw you off Exactly. The yes, they so they, 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 they draw the line. If you're going to entertain, entertain. If you're going to be a politician, be serious and angry. That's that's the line. Yeah. That's but maybe you can change it, too. Because do you realize you're the, you're the most favorite presidential candidate? Thank you. <laughs> you were. Thank you. you. You got more attention than everybody. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's it good. Did, it didn't bring the votes, though. How did you feel about it, that? It brought the votes, anyway. Yeah. I got a lot of votes. I'm happy, at least. I wasn't the last person. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that um, what I really love about politics is that uh, after this 2012 general elections, I, I, I sat down and analyzed the whole issue. And I realized that um, even though I was... Uh, first time in the, the presidential election, but uh, Ayarika went far, as you just said, and people now understand the concept that I was bringing. Actually, probably they understood it very late, because what I was trying to bring on board was to make sure that the young people of this country understand it is time for us to rule, and that uh, we should come together as uh, youth of this country, assemble ourselves, form uh, a team that can manage this country in respect of, of which political party you are coming from. And I believe that um, uh, the youth need to stand up. They need to wake up because it's time for us to rule. And being 40 and being the youngest presidential candidate was a signal and a sign to many Ghanaians that it is time for the youth. And we needed to come together, rally behind Mr. Hassan Ayerga to show that, yes, we are united, it is, we are ready, and move on. Uh, but it, it, it looks like it went down very late. They are beginning to understand it now when the elections are over. But uh, we still have another elections coming. Many more elections are coming. So they will get to understand that this concept or the principles of Hassan Erga was not just for the PNC, but was for the entire nation and the people of this country, the youth in general, to come together and form a, for, mm -hmm. uh, a strong mm -hmm. force to manage the affairs of this country. For 56 years, we have, we, we have been... Uh, uh, we have watched our leaders, our seniors, our fathers manage the affairs of the nation. Yet we are where we are. Every day you, you listen to radio, you, you watch televisions, and all the same thing. We, are, we haven't moved any inch. We, we move 10 steps ahead and move 20 steps backward. Anytime there's a new uh, election, then we move another 10 or 20 steps backward. And what we wanted to do was to say, look, enough is enough. 56 years, we are still faced with water problems, electricity education, food security, health, and many, many others. What are we doing as a nation? Do we sit down and open a book or open a page and read that page and understand that, look, we haven't read this page. When are we going to read the page before we can finish reading that book? So if after 56 years, I am 40, and after 56 years, Ghana cannot get enough resources for it, even though we have enough resources, Ghana cannot be able to manage, manage its resources very well. So what is the problem? And the answer is leadership. And you're saying it's because the leadership has been of the old age. Oh, is, is it a matter of understanding the issues? Because there are some young people like you who probably also don't have a clue who understand the international dynamics of what's going on. So is, is, is the solution age? My brother, if I need to ask a question I don't know, you know what I need? A laptop and access to internet. And I can ask any question, I'll get a good answer. Mm -hmm. We have grown up with you. Those years and those times were different times. But this time now, it's the iPad time, it's the digital time, and we can get everything that we need. We have studied a lot of uh, books, but it doesn't go down with our affairs in Ghana. You can't go to Boku or to Bolga and start bringing American books and read the books and say, let me solve the problems of the Boku people. No, you don't need that. You have to get there, get to the grassroots, understand their problems. They want water. Get water for them. That is part of solving the problems. But when you want to build castles in the air, when you cannot even get water for your people, where are we going? So it sounds like a very simple problem. Go to the people, find out what the people want. Why hasn't any leader cracked it so far, if, if it's that simple? Because they read the wrong books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They read the wrong books and apply the wrong methods. We, we are a developing country, and you want to apply the method of a developed country. <laughs> when you have not been able to finish up with the uh, road facility, uh, uh, distance projects around, you, you, want, you want to build a castle in the sea. Mm. 
you, you, do you get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So what I'm trying to let you understand is that, yes, we have many brain, uh, brainy people in this country, intellectuals, professors, PhDs, and others. But it doesn't help us as a nation. Because all these people, we, we don't trade their brains for anything. For 56 years, we have a million plus engineers. The cameras you are using here are not manufactured in Ghana. The lighting system behind you is not being manufactured in this country. Even my toothpick is from it's, Ghana. Can you imagine? <laughs> so the question is why? Why? So if the, the professors, the engineers are not working, let's put them to work. Let's tax them to work. You, you, you get me? Yeah. But you see, every day they fly outside and inside, outside and inside, yet they don't come with anything. They want to be named professor, doctor, and all this. It doesn't help Ghana. The laborers perform better than many of the professors that we have in the system. Because they go to work, they make sure that we have all this building, they put up, they do their best, eight hours, they are done, 12 hours, they work hard. But the management team that is supposed to lead us to get to our final destination, they are not leading us well, mm -hmm. and including myself. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that if you do everything, if you do the same thing all the time, you always get the same answer. So what you need to do is change to change the method, the method yeah. and you get a different result. <laughs> There, 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 there were certain parts of the PNC that were upset with you some time ago during the election that uh, you made certain statements that were personal to you and they couldn't be representing the party. Did I? Uh, yeah, yeah, some few people, but in any way, as a leader of a uh, campaign or the leader of the party, you need to be able to do things that are, can change the face of the party. If you have to always do the same thing that they have been doing, <laughs> you will not get a better resource. So when you are given the mandate to manage, you need sometimes to be more practical. Mm -hmm. Okay? You need, because looking at the whole thing, if you watch the campaign 2012, Ayarga was all alone, campaigning throughout the country. You won't see my chairman there. You won't see my organizer there. You didn't see my uh, youth organizer. Was so it a deliberate boycott, or that was the arrangement? That was that was their own arrangement, but that won't stop me from campaigning. I thought that uh, even though there was so much division in the party before I got in, but it was necessary for us to mend those uh, divisions and move on as a nation. And what I want is that Ghana should move on. It's not about me. It's not about my ch my wife, or it's about anybody. It's about Ghana, and we have a duty to play, everybody. You all have something to, 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 to do. It is not about the doctors alone or the engineers. Everybody has a role to play. And when you refuse to play the role and you expect a uh, 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 government to do that, government can't do that. Who is the government? You and I, we are the government. So we don't have to sit down and say, oh, NDC is in power, MPP is in power, so they should come and do my this. No, I did my road. If you get to my area, I constructed the road. I paid the electric, what do you call it, the street lights in my area. I paid for. Everybody can do something. Mm. We all can do that. I, I have a surprise for you. A big surprise? I have a surprise for you. I don't want small small surprise. You know no, no, no. I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if I tell you, your wife is in the audience, will you believe it? Wow. Are you sure? Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. okay, I can see her here. All right, let's invite your wife. Let's invite her. So, um, Anita, I've been talking to him. I'm just, 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 just two minutes with you. Just, to, I'm glad you, I'm glad you showed up here to surprise him. He didn't know. Oh dear. <laughs> How are you, baby? Yeah. I, re I, re I remember the debates, watching it on TV, and you were just in the back there smiling and laughing at his jokes. And how do you, uh, It's a very silly question I'm going to ask you, but what's, what's your feeling about this man that you, you sitting right there to you? Oh, Hassan is a very friendly person, a jovial person, and very serious, though he jokes. So sometimes we need to <coughs> ease some tension, mm -hmm. and that was what people didn't get. Did but I support him all the way. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So what, what, if you look into the crystal ball, do you see First Lady Anita Ayariga somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in the crystal ball? Well, if he plays his part very well. If he plays his part very well, yeah. Yeah. And, and 
Has there been any time that after the debate, for example, you go in and said, oh, Hassan, this one shouldn't have said it, or you should have said it this way, or everything he says you agree with? Oh, no. I mean, sometimes he does, he says things I'm not really happy about. Like what? Give me an example. Um, Something he said you did when we were very, like he shouldn't have said that. Um, I think when he spoke about um, Nanako Fuado, in a way, in a way, I didn't like that too much because I thought he might be offended. Mm. But listening deep and deeper, he didn't really point fingers at one, him. Was so. it what you kept calling him my daddy? Or my what, daddy. What, what exactly did he say that you didn't like? Um, that was when he was mentioning my daddy because I thought he would feel offended. <laughs> but somehow, I understood where he was coming from. And really, he's, he's much, much older than him. So yeah. somehow, when I asked him later, he said he didn't mean it in a negative way. Yeah. So. Mm. When did you guys meet? Oh, about 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago. Oh, really? Where? At the beach. Oh, you met at the beach? Hey! Oh, that's... <laughs> well, you went swimming. Yes, let's see. I mean, you spotted her first or she spotted you? Masa, you know I joke around. I always joke. So I joked with her, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, had, she was enjoying your jokes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, okay. So for men out there, yeah. the joking works, so. <laughs> when you see them joke, man, that's, that's how I got my yeah. wife to, man. Oh, it's... I, I just, <laughs> I, she laughed at her. She didn't know I was working. <laughs> you were putting the hey, thing together. She was laughing. Quack, quack, quack. I said, you don't know. I'm working, man. <laughs> see. Oh, that's great. So how many kids? Five and all. Five and all? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Show some love, man. Well, we thought you were the audience and we should, we should you know, invite you to join us. Um, uh, Hassan, what, 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 what is it about your wife that you have never told her or you've said everything? Um, you know, for me, I say it new things every day. Yeah. And one of it, I would say to Dada, she, um, she's the best mother in the world. She's the best mother in the world. Uh, for me, she's the most beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> best one the best in the whole of Ghana, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's very, very accommodative and uh, very hardworking. If you come to the house and you see the way my wife managed the house, actually, she doesn't even need a house girl because she, she practically will do everything. She, mm -hmm. Because she wants everything intact, clean, detailed, and yeah. that, yes, yeah. detailed, you know. And um, sometimes I tell her, look, my darling, I wish you could just rest more, you know. So some people will see her hey, and look at the beat and say, oh, for this woman, she will even wash a pot, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but this is a lady who goes down to earth and do everything mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I can ever find a woman like her. Wow. No, wow. no. Wow. Wow. So, uh, Does she do anything that you don't like or... Uh, Anything I don't like, uh, what do I say? Maybe if I want to go out, and she would say, hey, why are you going? I say, oh, I just want to see two things and come back. <laughs> she wants me to be beside her. That's why I know. <laughs> <laughs> anything yeah. you? What, what, what is it you haven't, anything you, you want to say about him? Oh, um, not really. Not really? No. Oh, really? He's just a nice person to be with. Mm. Yes, to have as a husband. I'm yes. proud of him. You're proud of him? Yes. Wow. You guys don't... You, thank you. Show some love, man. You, you don't look like just man and wife. It's like you're good friends. Yeah. yeah. We, that's true. We are very yeah, good friends. Yeah, good, very good. Uh, she's the only friend I have. She's the only friend The you only have. friend. I don't even have a friend. Not even you is my friend. You are not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Can I register? Uh, no you, way. Maybe you take me. No way. She's the only one I have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yo, uh, thank you so much for joining us. No, you did, my brother. It was, it was great. And let's do the next thing. Okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and Anita, thank you too for joining us. Eh? And uh, God bless you. Thank you. All right. You. Show some love to them. Oh, stick around, folks. We'll be right back.